So let's get started fermenting some pet waste. This can be done with either cat or dog or for that matter almost any animal pet waste. And the first step is to collect all of the materials that you need. Now I have samples of dog waste that have been collected in plastic bags from the local dog park. But my recommendation of course is use a scooper in your own yard or in your own area and try to avoid using plastic bags as much as possible because we already know they're not going to help the landfill and they're going to be more and more difficult to use. The so-called so -called compostable bags don't really break down. So if we have a fermenting system, we have two fermenters. We have the culture mix. We have what's called an accelerant. We need a measuring cup and some tap water and that's all we need. We're ready to go. So we start out using a measuring cup. We have first filled the fermenter about half full with water. We take the liquid accelerant and we're going to measure one cup and add it to the water. So that's about 300 milliliters or if you have a measuring cup you can just go by the mark on the edge. So here's a cup of accelerant added to the water. That's the first step. Very simple. Each cup of accelerant will process one fermenter which will handle the equivalent of about 20 pounds of pet waste. And in that process of fermenting, in seven days, it'll be completely broken down. Now I have some of the culture mix which is on wheat bran and molasses. It's a dry powder and I'm just going to sprinkle that on the surface and that's all I need to do. Now we're going to add the pet waste to this solution. I have several sacks here of pet waste which I picked up from the local dog park. I know this doesn't sound like fun but it's an important thing. I'm getting rid of the pet waste directly into the fermenter and I'm going to break all of this material down and you notice I don't need to do a lot of mixing I just simply need to add it to the solution. The powder with the microbes will begin to break down and ferment this pet waste once the uh, seal is put back on the fermenter so that we don't have any oxygen in the area. So let's just take a minute here and get the rest of these done not a very fun job perhaps but you know what I feel good about the fact that this pet waste is going to end up doing something good so I have a number of bags here now obviously I don't have 20 pounds but I probably have about five pounds of material at this point and we've got just a couple more bags to finish up here some of these people have tied them into knots, which is kind of interesting because they're just sealing the fate of that material to produce a lot of methane when it gets put into the landfill. And I know my ornamental plants are going to be very happy at the end of the process to get this material back to the soil. And I can feel good about the fact that I'm not contaminating the groundwater. Oh, here's one that's double bag. And it has a little grass in it as well. And that's something to remember. It doesn't matter if there's a little grass. The grass is organic material. It'll get eaten up by the microbes, so it's not a problem. Just put it all right into the, into the fermenter. And our last bag here. Now, with the material placed into the fermenter, we only now need to seal the system. So we 
just simply close it down so it's airtight and we leave it alone. At this point the fermentation process will get started and we'll take a look at the end product and show you what to do with the material after it's been fermented.